This week is National Boat Safety Awareness Week, and we are joined by Dave White. You are the Coastal Recreation and Tourism Specialist with New York Sea Grant. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you both. Great hey, to see you. Thanks How are you for down there, well, I am up the proverbial creek, but I, I do have a paddle. You do. Yes. You do. You're a step ahead of most of us. <laughs> now, why is, is boat safety so important? I mean, do, do most people who have boats, are they aware of all of the safety measures? You'd be surprised how many people really aren't, mm -hmm. and especially as laws keep changing from year to year. Um, and Chris is in our, our addition this year to the Discover Clean and Safe Boat ah. Display, a, a Grumman made right here in New York Canoe. Right down 81. Of, right down 81 mm -hmm. in Marathon, New York. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Chris has got his PFD on. It's not pr properly secured, but you got it on, which is good. A big change for paddle sports, folks, the last couple of years is you have to now have a wearable on board ah. for everybody. And, and it's always recommended you have a throwable Type 4. In, in the old days, you know, you'd sit on the cushion and that would be what you'd have. But a lot of folks don't realize now in a canoe you have to have well, a, a wearable. Type 4, what's Type 3 or Type 2? Does you are, I am wearing a Type 3. Kaylee and I are modeling our okay. Type 3 life jackets. Well done, Kaylee. Uh, you know, a lot of times you're going to see those for people that are out jet skiing, mm -hmm. uh, 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 tubing. You know, mine is great for fishing because uh, it's got a lot of ventilation in it. These are the type three, and you're wearing the type two. Okay. Um, you know, as I call it, the great old orange ugly one that everybody has on board. Classic. Um, it's a great one, though, because <laughs> if someone does have that on and They'll falls overboard, yeah. it will right oh, your head your neck. Okay. because yeah, yeah. it has the neck. If Kelly yeah. and I fall overboard, we're going down face first. Right. So you're going to save us. Can we talk to, oh, oh, sorry, sorry Kaylee, no, go ahead. Who patrols this? Who's, who's out on the water kind of making sure that we're abiding all of the safety regulations that are put um, in place? You, you guys had a great shot last night with the sheriff, but depending on the body of water you're on, because we have a lot of navigably connected bodies of water, mm -hmm. so you can be on the water and you may see the sheriff, the state police, uh, the Customs and Border Patrol mm -hmm. folks, U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary is out there to help folks. So there's a lot of folks out there to help, and the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary and the Power Squadron also do courtesy exams this time of year mm -hmm. so if you find out they're doing one it's great to go out with them because they're going to come and look at your boat and tell you everything that's on it is it safe do you have all the required equipment and as we always remind folks is your is your you know, fire extinguisher charged you might have one on board flares, and flares yeah. are they are yeah. they correct and up to date because a lot of folks when they bought their boat they got the safety kit with it and they put it away and they don't realize if they got their boat 10 years ago and they've never replaced their flares, their flares are out of date and sometimes a fire extinguisher will lose a charge on its own. Hey Dave, if we talk about children in the boat, what are the rules with children as far as flotation devices and what kind they should be wearing? Um, under the age of 12, they have to have them on and like I have fully secured when a boat is underway. And what a lot of folks don't realize, a boat is underway unless you are tied at a dock or oh. at a mooring. So if you're just out basically at anchor, you're still technically like underway. Mile Bay up in Oneida Lake, you so, still got to have a... You got it. Okay. If that child is 12 and under, and the nice thing about it is if you get the kids used to it and they're 12 and under, and they're wearing, you know, probably the type threes like we have on, mm -hmm. they're comfortable, they're easy, they match their bathing suit, they match their knee board, they're going to probably grow up continuing to wear them, which is a really good step forward versus those of us that never had to wear one. That, you know, now we're retraining ourselves to be able to do that. Now, Dave, I have a canoeing question because I do canoe. I'm wondering if Chris and I are, are we're moseying along down the river mm -hmm. and all of a sudden we tip. Mm -hmm. Maybe his isn't secured properly. What do I do? What's the first step? Well, and that's why, although it's not required any longer, I always recommend to have the Type 4 throwable mm -hmm. because the nice thing about it is if he's over there and he doesn't have his on or came up, you can just toss this right over to him. He can grab it, put his arms right through it, and he's got his safety device right there. And that's mm -hmm. why these are so critical to have on board. But you can get it to anybody if they don't have it secured, if it's fallen off, or they just had it in the boat and went over. Oops. That's why a Type 4 is really helpful. What's mm -hmm. the things with partying? A lot of people want to party Memorial Day weekend and DUI. How does that work? And uh, is it go on your license if you get busted? Uh, the, the big issue is, and a lot of folks, you know, and again, you guys talked about it yesterday real well, is... Or BUI, I should BUI, say. BUI, yeah. boating while, you know, under the influence, boating while intoxicated, and, and an operator of a boat can drive, can drink and drive. It right. is legal for a boat operator to do that, but they need to be cognizant. They're responsible for everybody on board. Mm -hmm. So, you know, cut but it way back. the limit is still the same as driving. The limit and the number is the same, but what a lot of folks don't realize is, you know, if your body is one that you could have three drinks and be you know, under the limit when you're at a house party, you could have three drinks and be way over the limit on water because like oh, today you provided this beautiful mm -hmm. sunshine, you're out bobbing around, you're having a great day. Sure. That can really influence how the alcohol is being absorbed into does, the body. Does that affect your driving record? Does that carry over to your driving record too? I've, I've always wondered that law. They, they put a new law in now that if you if you do get caught um, with a BWI, uh, again, because if you're over the age of 18, you don't need a boating certificate. Before you could ever operate a boat again, you have to go get a boating certificate, take a know. class to get a boating certification. And always remember, Anybody that operates a personal watercraft has to have taken a class and have a certificate. 
So that's anything. another wow. anything. So uh, well, ski doo, yeah. you know, personal watercraft. Whether you know, ski doo is a brand yeah. name. Whether you're on a you know a Yamaha, whatever yeah. it might be. Anybody that's operating a personal watercraft, no matter what their age, has to have a certificate. Well, we got to hey, get going, Dave. So oh, there I'm you not go. Anywhere though. Thank yeah, you, Dave. you're going thank you someplace much. fast, Chris. I can tell.